believe will be salvation if you need healing in the body. By his stripes, you are healed. By his stripes, you were healed. Amen. It, 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 just to have a little faith, believe him. So if we have faith with mustard seed, we can say that mountain be plucked up and cast under. So it don't take a whole lot of faith to get healed. Amen. don't take a whole lot of faith to get saved, neither. All you need is him call on you and call upon his name, and you shall be saved. Whosoever will shall be saved. Let everything have breath. Praise the Lord. He knows how, he knows how to take good care of me. No matter where the storm may be, walking with Jesus is the way I be. Before I know the problem, my God already knows the need. Yes, he knows how, he knows how to take good care of me. Well, walking by faith and not by sight, it's sometimes hard to do. Well, just how long will I carry this burden? Before the fear of another long comes to And in my mind starts to wonder Just where I would be For many years I've been serving the Lord Been taking good care of me Oh, He knows how He knows how to take good care of me No matter where the show may be I'm walking in Jesus is the way I be Before I know the problem
walking with Jesus is a wealthy. The more I know the problem, my God already knows what he is. He knows how. He knows how. He's been a shelter over me. Well, from day to day, he's provided. Well, everything that I need. Well, I don't have to worry. When I close my eyes to sleep, you see, he never gets to be busy. Oh, he gets to watch it over me. Oh, he, he knows how. He knows how, how to take good care of me. No matter where that show may be. Oh, what the big Jesus is the me. Before I know the problem. Before the spirit of the Lord comes through, but then my mind starts to wander just where I would be. For many years I've been serving the Lord, been taking good care of me. Oh, he knows how, he knows how to take good care of me. No matter where the storm may lead, a walk with Jesus is the way I'll be. Before I know my problem, my God already knows the need. Yes, he knows how. He's been a shelter all over me. Well, for day to day, he's provided for everything that I need. Well, I don't have to worry. When I close my eyes to sleep, you see, he never gets too busy. He keeps a watching over me. Oh, he knows how. He knows how to take good care of me. Well, no matter where the show may be, I want to be cheated as well. Provided. Well, everything oh, yes. that I need, Hallelujah. well, I don't have to worry. When I close my eyes to sleep, you see my God never gets to be there. He gets to watch it over me. Oh, he knows how, he knows how to take good care of me. No matter where the storm may lead, I want to be Jesus the way I mean. Before I know the problem, my God already knows my need. Yes, he knows how. Raise our hands right now. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Little Jonathan. I know he's young, but he said, can I get saved? Have knows if God talks to you, it's God's all that matters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just give the Lord and him a great big hand tonight. Amen. 
Amen. As he gets older, he may have talked to the Lord some more, but I'll tell you one thing. It's good that they get touched at this time and age. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord one more shout of praise because he knows how to take good care of us tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, just raise your hand and just worship him. We just thank you, Lord, that you know how to take care of us tonight, Jesus. We just thank you for just worship him tonight, Lord. We thank you for what you're going to do in this service tonight. You're a mighty God tonight. God's nothing impossible without you tonight, God. And we're going to believe for the possible. We just thank you today. We thank you tonight, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm not a warrior. I'm too afraid to lose. I feel unqualified for what you're calling me to. But the Lord, your I've got no excuse. Broken people are exactly who you use. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Give me a hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David. Lord, be my defense so I can face. Confidence. You took a shepherd boy, made him a king. I'm gonna trust you and give you everything. I'll be a conqueror, cause you fight for me. I'll be a champion, claiming your victory. In the lion's den, give me a hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David, Lord, be my defense, so I can face my giants with confidence. I'm not a warrior. What you calling me to? But the Lord, your strength, I've got no excuse. Cause broken people are exactly who you use. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Give me a hope like Moses in the wilderness. Giants with confidence. You took a shepherd boy, made him a king. I'm going to trust you and give you everything. I'll be a conqueror, cause you fight for me. I'll be a champion, claiming your victory. In the lion's den, give me a hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David, Lord, be my defense, so I can face my giants with confidence. I'm going to sing and shout and shake the water. Oh, yeah. Shout and shake the walls. I won't stop until I see them fall. I'm going to stand up, step out when you call Jesus. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Give me a hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David. Lord, be my defense. So I can face my 
We can face our giants with confidence tonight. You know why? Because Jesus gave us the victory. Hallelujah. When David walked out on the field, Goliath was good as dead. You know why? Because he came to him in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know what? Goliath was relying on his, on his size and all the natural things. But David was relying on the Lord. And, and you know what? There was a great victory that day for, the, for David and his men. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The God of David, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is in the house tonight. He is the I am that I am. His name is Jesus. You can be seated. So good to see everybody tonight. Privileged to be back in the house of the Lord. If the offering takers will make their way to the front, we'll get ready and take up tonight's offering. Let's make Sister Carla welcome as she sings tonight. Give her a hand. Brother Tim, stand and testify tonight while she's getting ready.
When I've just gone through the motions, I'm sorry. When I've just sang another song, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm sorry. When I've come. Hallelujah. It's a privilege to be in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Minnie, testify tonight, sis.
Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give Sister Doris a hand as she sings. Make her welcome tonight. a mighty God, and I was just thinking, you know, praying this morning how much God has moved lately. <laughs> it's like I've had a rough year, but if God hadn't been there, it would have been a lot rougher. I mean, you know, God's been so good, so good to me and my family this past year. Just can never thank him enough. And when I sing this song, sometimes when I first heard this song, Sister Linda Gibbs, I think it's her name, when I heard her sing it, I uh, <laughs> I shouted all around my kitchen. I'm like, who is singing this song? And I just, just got in the spirit. And I'm like, and I pulled up the video and watched a little while. And I thought, well, that church must be shaking it down. I mean, it was an awesome song. And I was getting into it in my own home. And I pulled up the video and they were all just sitting there. <laughs> and I thought, well, goodness, a song like this, y'all should have been up running and shouting and everything, you know. And I thought, well, they got used to it. You know, they did. The anointing was there. And then I thought, too, I think all of us that sing up here, you know, sometimes we don't, it don't feel like it just goes out there and everybody gets anything, you know. And so you think in your mind, you know, I just flopped. I wouldn't. But, you know, that song got me years later. So we never know when you sing a song. Gene, you could sing it today and people may not move and somebody may watch it. Eight, ten years, and you just, and God use it, and we not even know it. It's so amazing. God is so good, and he does everything his way. Isn't that amazing, too? <laughs> oh, you have plans on your life, and you got it all worked out, and, <laughs> and God steps in. <laughs> and you think, oh, God, what am I going to do now? But he already knows what you're going to do because he's said, got it all planned out. <laughs> and he's never failed me. He's always took care of me, always. And, I, and I, he just wants us to trust him. I do. I know God's going to take care of everything in my life. And I also remember, too, and I heard her testify that she's about to get in the Holy Ghost. That's what this is about. And the main thing in life is obey God. It's so important to obey. Obey first. Um, I went and started, I was brought up in the Nazarene church. Barney was brought up in the Methodist. Well, we found this little Pentecostal church through Sister Pam's husband. And first night going, we was young. We got saved. That was it. We just loved it. And, uh, well, we, we went and went. And, you know, there's more than the salvation. There's more. It's called the Holy Ghost, y'all. It's more. And you should desire it because it is awesome. Well, I strived and I prayed. <laughs> I couldn't seem to get it. <laughs> and I knew God told me to go up front. And everybody else would walk up and stand. And I'd watch it. And I knew God told me to go up and kneel. Not at the thing, but he told me to kneel. And I didn't do it. And I kept standing, praying, trying to get it. And one night, Sister Goni came. <laughs> Sister Goni came. <laughs> Thank God for Sister Goni. <laughs> she, was, she was wonderful. But she had, had people to come up and pray. I came up and kneeled. It was just to pray. It wasn't for the Holy Ghost. And she came over and started praying for me, kneeling, like I knew I was supposed to be doing. But I wanted to do like everybody else. I want to go up there and stand. You know, that's the way you're supposed to do it. And I knew God didn't tell me to do that. And I'd have done God it a lot sooner if I just obeyed, just obeyed. But that I did get it the way I knew I should. If I was kneeling there and she come over and just prayed for me, and I just fell out in the floor backwards. It, it, God's just you guys are so good. <laughs> I need to shut up. <laughs> and I love Jason. Just plays so good and hides by me. <laughs> They're so good at the music up here. <clears throat> I got it in the morning and I got it in the
hallelujah. How many glad you got it tonight? Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord one more praise tonight. Hallelujah. How many glad you got it? How many glad you got it like the Bible said? Hallelujah. He knows he's a mighty good God tonight. One more time, raise your hands towards heaven and just thank God tonight for all of his goodness and hallelujah, what he's doing in this place tonight. The awesomeness of God tonight. Come on. Just love him. Hallelujah. Just take and shut everything else out that may have tried to go on today and just say, Lord, I'm here. I want to just sit at your feet tonight. I can leave here hollering, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Thank you, Lord. Just love you for a moment tonight. I thought number one would surely be me. I thought I could be what I wanted to be. I thought I could be all my sinking sand, but I can't. that song tonight. Lord, I don't even walk without you holding my hand. My mountains are too high. My valley's way too wide. But down on my knees where I've learned to stand. Lord, I came without you, Sister Shirley. My name, Lord, I came. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus.
Hallelujah. Raise your hands and love him, church. Lord, I can't even walk. Thank you, Lord. To hold in my hand the mountains to high. Thank you, Lord. The valleys to wide. But down on my knees, there I've learned to stand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Sing it, everybody, one more time. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, just let God touch you tonight. Hallelujah. Isaac right now, Lord. Father God, you know every need tonight. God, may your mercies and your compassion tonight, Lord, touch him. God, watch over him, keep him safe. Lead the blood of Jesus against every danger, Lord, and make him wise. God, the fear of you, God. God, in this impartation, God. Pray for you, would you? Leave God for Sister Kathy right now, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, you know the strength she has need of tonight, Lord. children, God. Reach your hands this way. For there's a special need tonight.
Father, we're going to agree. We're going to agree. God, in the name of Jesus, God. Father, by the power of God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I came in. Sing it with us, church. Without you holding my hand. The mountains too high. The Thank you for it. your hands this way, saints of God, and let the Lord just touch every need right now. sing it. Lord, I came. God, just move in a different way we all planned on, so just let God touch right now and reach your hands for Brother Seth. He really needs a he really needs a miracle tonight. This body, this diverticulitis, is that what it is? Or colonitis, is what it is? But let's ask God to turn this thing completely around. God, we anoint him in oil tonight, Lord.
you, God, from the crown of his head, God, to the soles of his feet. Thank you for it tonight, God. Thank you, Jesus. Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Sing it, church. Let's pray for Brother Buddy tonight. Let's all just keep our minds on the Lord and amen and ask God just to touch every need right now by the power of God. Brother Buddy's going to have to go have surgery the 27th of this coming month. They're going to have to sew his eye together for several months because things are not working that eye, but I believe God between now and then that things can change greatly by the power of God. How many believes that tonight? Amen. Amen. So let's just believe God tonight. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. How many believes God tonight? How many believes God tonight? How many believes God tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Raise your hands and love him all over this building tonight, would you? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sing it with me. For he touched me. Oh, he touched me. I feel like God's touched some people in here tonight. Come on, one more time. Something it happened. And And he made 
Can we all, if it's possible, I'd just stand up and sing that to him tonight. Boy, he touched me. Oh, are you glad he touched you tonight? Oh, he touched me. Hallelujah. Come on. This altar's open. Somebody needs to pray tonight. You might need to be touched tonight. This altar's open. It happened. And now I know he touched me and he made Well, I was shackled by a head to be burdened. I was beneath the load of guilt and shame. In the hand of Jesus. Brittany, let's pray for you. Brittany, let's pray for you tonight, would you? And now I am no longer the same. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. Let's ask God to touch little Dalen tonight. Let's ask God to meet every need. I felt that a while ago. Father, in the name of Jesus, God touched Dalen. Touch Amanda tonight, Father, by the power of God. God, you know all this need tonight, Father, and by your mighty hand, and for Brittany, Lord, and God, and for every need tonight, Father. God, I thank you for it. I praise you for it. God, I magnify your name tonight, God, that, God, that you'll get the glory out of this. Father, by the power of God, touch them tonight, Lord. Touch them tonight in the name of Jesus. Touch them tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. It happened. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, for Sister Jody, God, you see this body. God, you see this tear and this glory come, God. But God, right now, we know, God, that you're the healer. God, touch it tonight, God, in a way that only you know how to do it. God, in the name of Jesus, let it be stretched, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I believe that. Hallelujah. He touched me. And oh, the joy that blessed my soul. How many been blessed of the Lord tonight? The presence of the Lord is still in this building right now, and it's like a few moments ago, it's like a, a mist, a fog. It was just the presence of God was thick in here, and I appreciate them in your time. The presence of the Lord, the power of the presence of the Lord was there to heal them. And I don't know tonight what your need could be. It could be something the devil's really just, and me, you may not even understand it all, but I want some people here tonight to say, God, I want you to heal me in my soul tonight. My soul needs healing. God, in my soul, I need a healing tonight. Bible talks of that, really. God, I need a healing in my soul tonight, Lord. God, in the things that really tries to rob me of the things of you tonight, God, I ask for a healing. God, I ask you to restore me tonight. Can you pray that prayer with me tonight? God, I ask you to restore me tonight. God, I ask you, Father, right now by the power of God to touch every heart, 
every soul right now, God, those that are just in a struggle, God, but of your anointing tonight, God, of your spirit, let that healing virtue flow. God, you said that your people was even destroyed for lack of knowledge, but God, we, we're not that way tonight, God. We've got knowledge. God, we know that you can heal tonight, and we know that you do heal. We know that you want to heal. Right now, Lord, just every soul, touch them tonight, Lord. Just touch their soul. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, Lord. Come on, just receive that right now. In the name of Jesus, receive that. For he touched me. Oh, he touched me. Something. It happened. Let's pray for Sister Minnie's sister tonight that they're going to do another amputation on her leg. Let's ask God just to touch that body. She's in a lot of pain tonight. Yes, Ryan. Yes. Father, right now, God, for Juanita tonight, Lord, and for Ryan. God, your word unto Juanita, God, that God, the circulation, God, the leads tonight, Lord. Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, have mercy upon us. God, by the anointing of God tonight. Father, by the power of God tonight. Touch your Lord. Touch the Lord. Touch the Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for it. Thank you for it, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How many feel like God's touched in this place tonight? Let me let me share this with you. Amen. The young lady that had kidney stones and they took, they had to go in and take one out. And they left a little piece that are like, the, they said, a, as the size of a grain of sand. And it set up an infection. And they gave her medicine. But the medicine went against her and cut off her circulation. And I saw that young, this has been probably a month and a half ago, six weeks, something like that. In January, before Christmas. And I saw her Monday, and they, they amputated her legs off up to here. I think she had three, four children, two children. And they've amputated her hands somewhere along here and they're going through the, they got one of them off and they're they're, they're dead they're, they're dead and I saw that woman and I, I stood there for a moment and I was in front here to brother Ronnie and I, I saw her and I stood there a minute and and I started to weep and I, I just got all messed up and and she had the sweetest smile and, and she seemed like to be in great spirits and I left from there, and I went over to the side of the building, and, and I prayed, and I said, God, I ask you to forgive me. I said, God, I grumble about it because it, it's a mist and rain. I grumble because I don't like the weather. I just make a bad day out of things because something I don't like, and ain't got a mouth to nothing. I said, Lord, 
I'm so blessed. Forgive me for my mummering. And I know I'll do it again, and I'll have to. But God, I, I just saw the, I said, God, how, and she was blessed to be alive because, amen, she had a choice. She could have she could, she could, have died and left her children, but she chose to take those arms and limbs off and to live for her children. And Wow. And she said, and I said, God, just help me. How many like to be touched like that? You like to rearrange some things and get some things prioritized in the right way. I still got two good legs tonight. Now, Sister Rachel, I know you're going through a rough time, but people people's died a whole lot less than what you're going through. Now, I'm not being, I'm just. And, and, and if she can have joy, I should have a whole lot of joy. <laughs> and you know what? I think we ought to just thank the Lord again for all of his goodness that he's done for us and what he's done in this place tonight in a way that we don't even understand. And, and I have my battles and I have my things that just gets on my nerves and amen tries to rob me but I've been praying God forgive me God I just got so much to praise you for so the next time you know you start to grumble just look and say God I thank you for a good hand to raise and Lord while I'm standing here I'm just going to pray for Sister Rachel because God she what she going through God I'm not even going through that thank you Lord I mean please we got something to praise the Lord for in here tonight I believe we all got something to praise the Lord here tonight for. You know, and tell me, I tell you, neighbor, them little things that gets on my nerves don't mount to much of anything when you look at things, do they? Do they? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I sat beside somebody one time, and they... They they had uh, false teeth or, or plates or something, and and they done a lot of clapping them, you know. And that can that can ruin you. Somebody shout Amen. And ain't ain't worth a, ain't about the hell of a bean. Can I get a witness in here? Sometimes the devil, you know, you come in church and the devil will try to pick you out something. But why are they drinking water? They're slurping like a hog. And next thing you know, you, 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 you're dead. You're dead in the water. If you don't get your mouth, you're dead in the water. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's the truth. So just thank God that we're so blessed tonight. How many of you we're privileged tonight? Amen. Brother Dow was all ready to go tonight. Hallelujah. And I had nothing to do with this one tonight. Hallelujah. But God is good. Somebody shout, God is good. Amen. He'll be ready again. God bless you, Brother Michael. You want to just say thank the Lord for being here? Before we go home, amen. I'm going to say God's a good God. It is a privilege to be here tonight. I, I appreciate the Lord. Appreciate the Lord moving. I, I will take just about two minutes and share a little bit of my testimony, okay? But the the Lord has been so good to me, and uh, look back and in, in over the years, and you know what? Um, I can see where the Lord has is made a way for me. But uh, the Bible says, "Be weary, not not to be weary in well doing, for for if you endure, you 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 not faint, you'll." you'll reap, right, in due season. So, and I know I didn't quote that exactly right, but but anyway, the, the thing about it is when you start out down that path, enduring, you start out pretty bold and pretty, you know, pretty dedicated, and, and you got a lot of tenacity, and you got a lot of intent, right? But after a while, and after a prolonged period of time, it starts to wear on you. And, you know, and I look back over my life, and I, and, I, and the times that I was the lowest, it's always a service like this that you can get refreshed in and that you can get you, that you can get over being weary and you can get a little strength out of those services. So, you know what, let's just give the Lord a hand clap tonight. Hallelujah. 
He's a good God. The Bible says he's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. And I sent, I sent a picture up there to Daniel. I want you to put that up if you can. So me and my wife, and I'm, I'll take about five minutes. Brother Keith, you know those boys back there in that picture? Noah's in the middle. Now, I started, yeah, that's, that's what I, I was looking through that the other day. I, I've had two, three experiences this week, and, and I'll take just a brief minute to share it with you. It's my testimony. But I started out serving the Lord in 1997, rededicated my life to the Lord at the Tent Revival. And, and Leanne got saved that same night. And the truth is, we were there because she wanted to go. And... Um, Man, Josh was born that October. We, we got saved in August, I think, or something like that. Josh was born in that October. Started bringing him to church. Two years later, Alex was born. And then two years later, Noel was born. And then four years later, Ben was born. And then another four years later, our baby was born. And so we, we brought them kids to church every service. I didn't have money. To, to keep, you know, that's probably a hand-me-down shirt he's wearing. Didn't have money for vehicles, didn't have money for gas a lot of times. And we would come to church in an old worn-out car or an old worn-out truck. And we would load those kids up. Sometimes we'd come to church, didn't have no seat belts or whatever the case was. And I'll never forget it. It was a blessing. I, I bought, that, bought, bought that Bonneville off of Brother Buddy. Yeah, and I left it out in the junkyard. I had a junkyard at the time. I had probably, I don't know, 50 or 75 vehicles out there. I left it out in the junkyard for a year, probably, after I bought it. And I had a van that was gave to me, and we got, we, we got it hot and ruin, ruined it. And so I decided I was going to try to get that car going because I had to have something to drive to church. And that car had <laughs> set out there. So I, I took the gas tank off from it because and, and it was a fuel pump issue. And I figured it out, and I rewired the fuel pump, and I, and I never had to put a new fuel pump in it. I just fixed the wiring harness, and I drove that thing forever. And I drove it to work, and in 2015, I got, I got a promotion at work, and I had been driving that car to work. Now, by that time, Leanne had used it when we were in the route, and she was hauling greasy parts in the back of it, and we had repainted her house and Leanne wanted the kitchen to be purple and somebody spilt paint in the back of that car and it was purple everywhere. I was driving home from this church one night in that car and I had put two new tires on the front of it and they didn't get them tightened up and the wheel came off on the right side and it blew the whole fender out. That fender was plastic and it blew the whole fender out. So now I'm driving down the road in this worn out car. <laughs> with purple paint all in the back of it, and the whole fender, no right fender. And I drive that car to work, and my store manager, I was working on store level at the time, and my store manager walks out there, hey, we're, we're going to Dairy Queen, we're going to eat a $5 lunch. <laughs> my store manager walks out there and sees that car, he said, did somebody kill Barney in your back seat? <laughs> had, had purple paint everywhere, you know. And, and I promise you, the odometer had quit on that car a long time before before I bought it. It had 252,000 miles. I drove that thing for years. I mean years. And when we were going to the old church where this picture was taken, had Noah in the back seat, Ben in the middle between Lynn and I, Josh and Alex in the back. And we'd head across Harvey's Ridge, I guess, 768, cutting through Glens Fork to come to church all the way down through there. And one day we would come to church one Sunday morning, and why in the world this happened, I'll never know. But over there, right before you get to 704, was coming around one of those curves. And there was a semi on a Sunday morning coming through there. And I met that semi on a curve, and his trailer was over in the road. And I took that Bonneville up a ditch. And we're, we're, we're flying through the ditch there to, to keep from hitting that trailer tires. And right before I get to the, to the cupboard, I pull it back up on the road. And no sooner than I get back on the road... I, I didn't overcorrect, thank God, because there was a vehicle behind that semi, or I'd hit that vehicle head on, you know. So, you know, just memories like that is just a testimony I wanted to share. But the thing that really wears on me, talking about being weary and well-doing, is, man, Noah 
I want to see that boy saved. He's, he's got a good heart. And I come across that picture the other day, and, it, and, it, and I seen him raising his hand in church. My goodness, you know, all the, you, you sit here today and you got your children in church with you. What a blessing. What a blessing you got your children in church with you. My goodness. I, I want to see him come in. I want to see him dedicate his life to the Lord. And, and you see that hand raised? That's a promise. That's a promise. And I tell you what, we, we've been through thick and thin, me and Noah has. We've been through it. There's a time we couldn't get along two minutes, and there's a time he'd do anything for me. You know what? But I believe God's going to save him. But I told you all that story about that Bonneville because two, two experiences I had this week. I, I was headed home, and I, I, I got pulled over for speeding. Imagine that, right? And it's, it's a Medcalf County Sheriff. And I don't, I, I've really not ever been pulled over by a sheriff, I can recall, for speeding, but he pulled me over. And I, and he turned his sirens on, too, you know. So anyway, I pull over. He, he comes up there, he says, Where you, he, and he introduces himself, and, and he asked me, he said, do you know why I pulled you over? And I said, I, I assume because I was uh, driving too fast. He said, oh, yeah. And he said, you was driving 88, which I wasn't going to argue with him, but I think I had my cruise on 85, okay. But I wasn't going to argue with him. <laughs> I didn't think he'd be productive. And he said, he said, where, he said, where are you, where are you coming from? He said, where are you going? I said, I'm going home. He said, where you live and all that. And I told him in Columbia. And he said, where are you working at? Or he said, where are you coming from? I said, Bowling Green. He said, you work there? And I said, yeah. And he said, who you work for? And I said, I work for House. And, and he said, oh, you've got a good job, don't you? And that made, you know, that made me think, my goodness, I've had a good job for a long time now, and I, I was just thinking, you know, I, 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 when he, he let me go, he didn't give me no ticket, I'm driving down the road, and I'm thinking, God, you blessed me with a, with a, you know, some mercy here, I didn't get a ticket, and you blessed me with a good job, and I was just thinking, you know, I hadn't thought, I hadn't thought about that in a while, because, because I've been stressed with work, you know, some things going on, and I've been stressed, and I thought, God, thank you so much for providing for me, and then another thing happened, and I guess I think it was in the last week. I pulled in Leanne, uh, especially if it's slick. I take her to work. I will walk her in the in the uh, building so she don't fall. And, and I just we just take some extra precautions because she's got the uh, prosthetic leg. And anyway, I was driving her to work, and I'll go pick her up and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, the security guard was out there that night. She works up up at uh, TJ Hospital there in Columbia. And he came out, and he's, and he's talking to me, and I ain't paying no attention to him. I didn't know he was talking to me. I had the window up, and I was looking at my phone or doing, doing something. And he's trying to talk to me. And Leanne's like, you're being rude. Uh, I didn't know it, so I rolled down the window. He said, man, you got a nice truck. And I thought, man, I get in that truck every day, and I don't never think too much about it. But there was a time I, I was driving that car that didn't have no fender on it. Uh, Kill Barney in the back seat. And it takes, it takes this fella to tell me I got a nice truck. And I thought, my goodness. You, you know what I'm saying? And, and God has blessed me so much. And, I, and I, fail, I fail to be thankful enough. I fail to give him glory enough. And I believe this church is going to be full of people just like you. I believe this church is going to be full of people just like me. I believe that with my heart. And I'll tell you why. I'll, I'll tell you why. And it's because we're going to show people how good God is. We're not going to just tell people how good God is. You see what I'm saying? We're going to show people. You know why? Because we're a city set on a hill. We're the light of the world. You know that? That light is to be an example. It's to show people. It's not to, it's not to dictate. It's not, it's not to drive people. You see what I'm saying? But we're to show people. And God has been so good to me. One other thing before I, before I close, and thank you for giving me a few moments to share my testimony with you. I'm supposed to share those testimonies, ain't you, Brother Tucky? But anyway, um, thank you for a few minutes. I want to thank my wife. My wife has obviously got the prosthetic leg. She was uh, born with some complications. Just about passed away as an infant. A whole bunch of stuff happened. She got transferred to Louisville, and I don't know what all she could tell you about it. Had several surgeries as a kid, spent a lot of her time in a body cast, and she's always had an artificial leg, and she said, she, she told me here the other day, and I don't know how I've been married all this time, and I didn't know it, but she told me the other day, she didn't think anybody would want to date a lady that's handicapped. And I said, you've never been handicapped, you've always taken care of the family, just like any other person would have. I, d I don't, and I, I'm not saying this in a bragging way, or 
or chauvinistic way or nothing, but I don't, I don't cook, I don't clean. And it's not, I've tried to clean, I've tried to help, but most of the time I end up getting in trouble, okay? <laughs> but she, she takes, she has raised, she has raised four kids. She's took care of those four kids. I changed very few diapers. And she's taking care of the house, and she makes sure I got supper. She works a 40-hour week job, or probably more than that, I don't know. And she takes good care of everything for me. And I rely on her. She's my best friend, I tell you. And I, I thought, you know what? I am so blessed to have my family. Alex is in the house of the Lord right now. <laughs> she's, got, she's got my grandkids back there. I walked in the other day home from work, and I'm sharing my testimony, guys. I'll, I'll hush here in just a second. But I came home from work, and, and uh, Tucker met me at the front door. And, man, he's just like he's just like he got a candy cane or something. He's going, Pappy, Pappy. I mean, he's just he's just all kinds of uh, uh, carrying on and, and, and just so happy to see me. And, and, uh, I was like, and so I have to play with him for a minute. And uh, we wrestle around and fight and, and play with his men and do all that kind of stuff, Brother Ronnie. And I thought, man, what a blessing, you know. And I asked Alex, huh? Oh, yeah. And I asked Alex, I said, Alex, how come when, when I came home and all you kids were there, I, y'all didn't do that when I came home? <laughs> I said, I said, here he is, proud to see me. I said, Alex, you never did do that. She said, Daddy, you always had something for us to do. We knew it was time to work when you came home. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But I am blessed to have my family in the house of the Lord. Um, got Sister Marie back there, my cousin. Been, been faithful for many years. Probably been going to church a whole lot longer than me. And then my Uncle Charlie and his wife and Rita and Sissy and Bobby. I'll tell you what, when I, was, uh, when, when I was a young man and Sissy was taking care of us some and Mom and Daddy was having trouble, she, she, she taught me about two or three good lessons there. And she even, even spanked me, Brother Keith, and I'm putting that nicely. <laughs> but I'll never forget one time we was over at the old Rowena Church, and she told me, she said, you can't run from it. You can face it now. But no, or or you can face it later. But you can't run from it. I'll never forget that. I was sitting in Daddy's old pickup truck, sitting out there talking. I'll never forget forget some of those lessons. Man, I've been blessed. Thank you for letting me share your testimony. God has been good to me. Let's give Him another hand clap of praise. <laughs> well, we've been blessed tonight. One more little thing. Brother Trevor has a birthday tomorrow. He'll be 23 years young, handsome as it can be, still single. Any of you young ladies that ain't look, ain't got one right there comes a good one down the road. Works every day, got plenty of money. Liam? <laughs> you kill me, won't you? <laughs> Let's sing happy birthday. How are you, Trevor? 23. How did you get that handsome in 23 years? You're blessed, that's right. Let's sing happy birthday to Trevor. A happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, son, I love you. Happy birthday. Jesus near every day of the year. A happy day to you. Happy birthday to you. May this be the best one you have.